the time where there was four networks, right? The appointment television. That's the way the world was. And promoting inside of it could be somewhat direct and somewhat straightforward. Sure. We live in a world now where there's over 200 broadcast cable premium channels, right? We live in a world of uh, non-traditional distributors. Uh, we live in a world of online services, apps, time-shifted viewing. We could keep going, right? Yep. That's just the distributor part. That's just you know in front of the television. So now when we talk about premium content, you know, we go back to a time where there was four stations, a couple of television shows. Now we You're getting me all depressed now. Yeah, I know, exactly. So now we're talking about a world where we have what, according to Wall Street Journal and FX research, 455 original scripted series yep. in 2016. I mean, Dennis, where do you and your you and your team start when you got something good and you're excited about a premium? Piece of yeah, content? I mean, I guess if uh, if, you, if you're viewing that as a problem, um, we're part of the problem. Right. So uh, at National Geographic, I mean, part of what we're doing over the last year or so is we've been uh, pivoting towards a a more premium um, storytelling format. So that really kind of started with us last fall uh, when we introduced the series Mars, which was a, a part scripted, part unscripted hybrid drama from Ron Howard and right, Brian right. Grazer. And then uh, we're actually premiering Genius uh, this April, which is a big reason why Nat Geo is here at South By as well. Sure. And, that's an, and that's our first fully scripted drama. So from a right. premium perspective, um, we're, we're in there and yeah. uh, we're only gonna get you know, worse with that, I exactly. guess, if you look at it that way. Exactly. But I think um, from, a, from your big question, I think the challenge for us is how do you how do you stand out yeah. knowing that there's that many Sorry. <laughs> Are we good? Up. Oh, we're Um, so from a marketing perspective, I think what, what we have to deal with is how do you stand out? And uh, there's so many you know, shows out there, so the, the challenge for my job and my team is how do, we, how do we put a show to market to make sure that we're actually out there a little bit louder? So you kind of mentioned it, how do you, going to market, right? You guys spend a lot of time, we can talk about Genius, because I know you guys are really excited about it. I know a, a lot of the people out in the crowd today, you guys have probably seen spots run in the Super Bowl or maybe in the Oscars, things like that. So. I mean, where do you start? You got something like Genius, the world is changing, right? How do you think about the new things that are innovative and some things that maybe weren't there, that even maybe when you look, did Mars, some things that are new? And how do you go to market with an innovative strategy with, say, new opportunities out there? Great, I think, um, you know, the first thing you need to do is, hate to say it, but you need to have an investment uh, commitment to putting a show like that out to the marketplace. And I think, you know, it starts with that, so I think, the days of um, launching and leaving a series, which is you know what what people used to do, which is you know drive people the, the couple weeks before premiere, market it, put some advertising dollars into the marketplace, and then hopefully they come to the premiere and then and they move on. Um, I think those days are certainly uh, few and far between. I think what we what we did with Genius specifically, and I think what hopefully other marketers are doing is um, we're starting that conversation far earlier. So what we did, part of our strategy for Genius was to actually. Um, be part of this social conversation starting as early as January. And our show doesn't even premiere till the end of April. And I think, um, so we wanted to be a part of the Golden Globes. We wanted to be part of the SAG Awards. We were part of um, the Oscars. And then clearly we were a big part of the Super Bowl. Um, you know, we won an award for our, our, our halftime spot. So I think that was all several months in advance. And then only now here in mid-March is when we're actually gonna start getting into our, our primary tune-in window. But the conversation doesn't end then. I think once, once premiere comes and goes, if anything, it's now we have to even be a bigger part of it and making sure that we're supporting every episode because people aren't watching live anymore. So we need to make sure that Genius, you know, throughout the entire duration of the season, we're, uh, we're in the market with on-air prom promotion and off-channel paid advertising as well. No, exactly. I would say a lot of what we do at Comcast Media 360 when we work with programmers like yourself is we really try to take kind of a step back and think how early can we go to market, right? Really before the show premieres. And how do we kind of talk continuity, right? How do we kind of optimize media on the fly? How are, we, how are we looking far out, knowing that the goal might be premiere, right? But there's also goals that are gonna follow it. So how do some of these like non-traditional distributors and, and maybe new things in the market change maybe your plans in terms of optim optimization, right? So we're within a media plan. Is there anything you guys maybe go to consider of just new things out there while, you're, while the media is running? Especially something like Genius where, to your point, you started really early and you have kind of this long play. Uh, great, great question. I think um, it, it comes back to the number of creatives that we actually want to run. And for a show like Genius, we've got a variety of segments that we're trying to reach. You know, our, the Nat Geo viewer is a what we call a fact finder, which is you know the older skewing male that's in it for the for the history and the accuracy. And then we've got 
other targets we're reaching for a variety of reasons. If we want to bring in more females, we want to bring in more sophisticated audiences. I think that's, um, you know, we need to develop a, a customized creative solution to deliver on against those targets. So, so in order to do that, we need to work with media partners that allow us to test that creative. So as we get into our primary launch window, um, what you just said is exactly what we're going to do. So we want to work with partners. You guys are obviously a big partner of ours, and there's others in the space that allow us to, you know, run creative in the marketplace, but allow us to learn from it very, very quickly because, you know, time is not a luxury when you're in flight with a, with a you know, 10 episode season. You want to make sure that you can learn as quickly as you can so that you can optimize that campaign. And then if, if you see a creative that might be underperforming or one that's overperforming, you want to be able to pivot and level set. Yep. So I know we're taking kind of a step back and looking scale at, say, a media campaign for Genius, but I think something, uh, maybe a point of conversation that fits into that, into your media plans, definitely fits into strategy and, and kind of also fits into the, the larger scope of, man, things are different than they were when there was four networks and not a lot of pieces of content. So the idea of time-shifted viewing, right? I know for us at Comcast, we have a great on-demand platform. I mean, in 2016, our subscribers viewed over 6 billion hours of content. That has to come up in your strategy meetings. has to be a big part of your media plans of how are you guys just going about strategizing against a time shifted audience that is happening daily? I mean, we're all part of it, or you know about it, or, or some way, shape, or form it's coming up in your meetings. Like, maybe you can go through that a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, the challenge is, is a mindset challenge in many ways. Um, and, and I've worked at a variety of entertainment companies in my career. I think we're all still kind of trained to look at the overnight numbers. And you know, you, you premiere a show on a Monday night, for example, and on Tuesday, you get those fast nationals, and all of a sudden, everybody's either thinking the show is a hit or it's not a hit, and, and then you know, the rest of the day is either not so good or you know, everybody's high-fiing each other. And I think um, that, that thinking needs to change, ultimately. And at Nat Geo, we're certainly doing that, where you need to be patient. And we're not patient people us entertainment marketers, and we want to know right away how we do. But I think, um, again, you have to wait. You have to wait to see how the Live Plus 2 comes in, the Live Plus 3, and even a week later. And we've had shows over the, over the years that um, there's been an amazing shift in, in the Live Plus, and I think that you know, people are just not watching live. But you look at it two weeks later, and you see massive increases in viewership. So it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. It's just we need to you know, retrain ourselves to make sure that we have to be a little bit patient. So with that comes how do we market. And we need to make sure that in, in order for us to maximize that and leverage that delayed viewing, we need to keep the show in the conversation in the marketplace across you know, all of our partners in terms of what we do with Comcast, what we do with social media, what we're doing with, with digital, and making sure that it's not a launch and leave mentality, that we are premiering and only then are we really getting started and making sure that um, we try to keep the show on top of everybody's radar throughout the entire season. And that's a very different uh, mindset than probably what you would have seen even just as soon as five years ago, where people would launch and maybe have a little bit of money left over for week two, and then, and then you were done. And I think what we're trying to do is approach our campaign in a very holistic way to make sure that we have plenty of uh, resources to our, our disposal way after premiere to make sure that you know we're only getting started for a show like genius you know we've got plot points that you know are critical to the season we want to make sure that we're we're going to advertise that so we want people to know you know stick with this and that there's things to come and right. the only way you can do that is if you stay in the market so we're talking about right time shifted viewing and it kind of just the idea of viewership i mean at the end of the day you're going to be graded on that media plan based on viewership right so I know a lot of the conversations we have with, <clears throat> excuse me, you and your group or other programmers is about measurement, right? So let's talk about ROI measurement. And really, I think you guys are sometimes challenged, right, to look at ROI cross-platform, cross-media partner within one single campaign. So maybe you can talk a little bit about, you know, Genius and, and how you guys are just take measurement, ROI, all that kind of post-campaign into consideration. One of the things we do at the very beginning is define what success looks like for a show. So for, for a project like Mars or like Genius, um, it's not just about ratings, don't get me wrong. Uh, number one on the list, uh, viewership, without a doubt. But I think uh, for where we are as a brand in terms of how we're pivoting to this new premium storytelling format, um, that, that brings in new audiences, that brings in younger audiences, that brings in new advertisers. So uh, buzz and acclaim and certainly awards. So I think if you look at that entire suite, that's kind of what we're looking at from a success perspective. But going back to ratings, um, at this point you have to, you, we, what we try to do is work with partners that allow us to measure awareness, 
because um, we do track awareness throughout you know, the beginning of a campaign, even pre-campaign, and then obviously what do our awareness levels look like once we're actually in market? And then really, what's the, what's the linkage to the brand and also what's the intent to view? So there are um, third-party companies that we work with that actually measure that, and then what they'll do is look at how each individual media platform within our campaign drives upper-level awareness brand linkage, as well as tune-in conversion, that being the holy grail, right? Um, and you know, not every medium is designed to do all three of those, or some are gonna do that better than others, but if you look at the entire, um, in aggregate of what we're doing, um, for a campaign like Genius, where you are putting significant resources behind it, or a show like Mars, um, you wanna learn as quickly as you can how all those media channels are driving success, so that you can pivot from that and learn from it for future efforts. So we only have a couple minutes here and kind of wrap up. So I know we want to maybe show the crowd, everyone kind of viewing today, maybe a quick 30 second spot that you guys are running for Genius. Are we able to cue that up and just run it real quick? What is this fascination with Einstein? He's the most original thinker in the world right now. Albert Einstein offends against the common sense of scientists. Never have I seen such disrespect. He's a dreamer. A true rebel. He's just the kind of man we want. It's time. That's great. Thanks, guys. So we're wrapping up here. I know one thing, I'm gonna give Dennis an opportunity to just tell everyone about maybe what you guys have going on by South, at South By, talk about your base camp real quick. Yeah, um, Genius was kind of a, a catalyst for us to have a major activation right up the street here in, in Austin. We are um, calling it the Nat Geo Further Base Camp. It, it basically celebrates all things um, ingenuity, creative thinking, um, you know, explorers and great storytelling. So Genius has a couple of different activations inside the venue. Uh, we even have a, a robotic um, Einstein chalkboard which draws people's pictures using nothing but Albert Einstein's handwriting and formulas and it does it on a digital surface and then that picture gets sent to you. It takes 12 minutes per drawing. It's an actual robot. Um, if you're in Austin for the week, you should definitely check it out. It's pretty amazing. It's right up the street. I know for us at Comcast Media 360, we have an interactive departure lounge uh, over on 5th Street. So come by, check us out. We'd love to meet everyone and say hello. Dennis, thanks again for the time. This was great, and just thanks for being a part of it. Thank you. All right.